This is video two of systems of linear inequalities. And here is the rubric for the outcome. So a level one is if you need more help with becoming consistent. A level two is if you can graph the solution of one linear inequality. If you can determine the solution of a linear inequality. If you can determine if a point is in the solution. And if you can match a graph with the linear inequality. So that would be level two. Level three is being able to rate a system of linear inequalities for a given graph. If you can graph the solution of a system of linear inequalities, if you can determine if a point is in the solution of a system, if you can determine if the boundaries and their points of intersection are part of the solution region, and if you're able to match situations and the graphs of the set of linear inequalities. And your level four is being able to solve situational question. So those are more of your word problems and graphing. So first as a bit of a warm up we're going to um, turn these following into y equals mx plus b. Yes these have linear inequality signs but we are going to ignore them and work with them as if they were an equal sign. The only time that we have to acknowledge that it's not is if we're dividing or multiplying by negative. So we still want to get it into this y equals mx plus b form. We just have a linear inequality. So in example one, we're going to move the 2x over by subtracting by 2x. And we get the y by itself. So y is less than and then what I like to do is I like to put the negative 2x right after the sign and the positive 3 at the end so that it's in that form of y equals mx plus b. Second example, I need to move over the x. So I'm going to add x to both sides. And divide by 2. So we get that y is greater than x over 2. And if you like to see it in the mx plus b form, well because there is no y-intercept we can put a positive 0 and if you want to write x over 2 as a fraction we just put 1 on the top. For question number 3, I'm going to move the x over by subtracting x from both sides. So I get negative y is greater or equal to, I'm going to put that negative x right behind the sign and I need to divide by negative 1. Now if you ever divide by negative or multiply by negative, you have to flip the linear inequality. So we flip it around. And now it's in y equals mx plus b form. So I'm just going to do a quick circle of my answers. So quick review, what is an inequality? Well, it's an expression that uses the following for symbols instead of an equal sign. So inequalities in our world include speeding limits. So for example, um, if the speeding limit was 100 kilometers per hour, that means that our speed, I'll represent that with an S, has to be less than or equal to 100 kilometers per hour. The drinking age in Saskatchewan, so you have to be over 19. So our age has to be greater or equal to 19. Then we have height limits for rides and ages to play Lego, which I believe is like 3 to 99 or something. So to graph linear inequalities in two variables. So here are a couple of definitions you should write down. We have a solution set, which is a set of all possible solutions. A solution region is the part of the graph of a linear inequality that represents a solution set. The solution region includes points on its boundaries if the inequality has the possibility of equality. So that means if we're working with less than or equal to or greater than or equal to. Continuous, a connected set of numbers. In a continuous set, there's always another number between any two given numbers. So continuous variables represent things that can be measured 
such as time. So what that just means is that we can break up those numbers into decimals. But if I was dealing with objects such as whole numbers, then we can't use any decimals. So time we can break up into fractions of time. So that works. But if we're dealing with, say, the amount of cars, well, we can't break up cars into half cars or quarter cars so that it's not a continuous set. So here is some steps to graph inequalities in y equals mx plus b form. So for example, if we were to graph that y is less than 3x negative 2, we're going to write the inequality as an equation. So we're just going to ignore the inequality for now. Then we're going to determine what type of line to draw. If it's a less than or greater than sign, the line is not included and should be dashed, but if it's less than or equal to or greater than or equal to, the line is included and should be solid. So this is important to know. Then we're going to graph the line using the same steps as in the previous lesson. So we're going to plot our y-intercept and then we're going to use our slope to find the next point. And then for step four, determine which half plane to shade. You're going to pick a test point. Usually zero, zero is the easiest. If it's not on the line, but if it is, we'd have to pick a different point. And then we're going to plug it into our equation. If it's true, we're going to shade that side. If it's not true, we shade the opposite. So here we're going to graph y equals 3x subtract 2. Well, it's y is less than 3x minus 2. But first, step one, we're going to graph it as if it is an equation. So negative 2 is my y-intercept. So I'm going to plot a point at negative 2. And then my slope is 3. And if I want it as a fraction, it would be 3 over 1. So that means I have to go up 3 to the right 1. And I can do another point if I want to. There we go. Okay. Now, this is y is less than 3x. It does not have the line underneath, so it's not less than or equal to. It's just less than. So that means I need to dash my line. Now, a way to remember if you dash or draw a solid line, they give you a linear inequality. If it has a line underneath, draw a solid line. If it doesn't have a line underneath, dash it. All right, so I got a dash line. And now I have to figure out what side of the line I should draw on. So I'm going to pick a point on one side of that line. And the easiest point is this guy here, the point 0 and 0. So I'm going to plug that into my linear inequality and solve. So the left side equals 0 and the right side equals negative 2. And then we're going to read it to see if it's true. Is 0 less than negative 2? It's not. So that means I have to shade on the other part of that line. So all these points on this side of the line would make that statement true. So this is my solution region. All right, more examples. We're going to graph the following, and luckily they're already in our y equals mx plus b. The first one, we have an equal sign. The second, y is less than or equal to, and the third, y is greater than or equal to. And they all have the same equation format. So 5 is my y-intercept. So I'm going to plot a point at 5. That's my starting point. The slope is negative 3 over 2, so I'm going to go down 3 over 2. There we go. And if it's just an equal sign, so it's an equation, it's a solid line. That's all I have to do. Now, graph number two is the exact same. So my starting point is five. I go down three over two. I get to draw a solid line because my linear equality is less than or equal to. So this is a solid line. 
but it's a linear inequality, so I have to test a point. And I'm going to test point 0 and 0. So with 0, I'm going to plug it in for x and y. And I get that 0 is less than or equal to 5. And that is true, so I'm shading this side. Now for question 3, same graph. So my starting point is at 5. My slope is negative 3 over 2. And I get to draw a solid line because of that linear inequality. And the only difference between 2 and 3 is now that linear inequality is flipped. So if I was to still test that same point, 0 and 0, I get that 0 is greater or equal to 5, which is not true. So I have to shade on the other side. So go ahead and take a look and compare all these three graphs and what happens when we change that equal sign to a linear inequality. All right, so now we're going to graph the solution set for the following question. I prefer to do it in y equals mx plus b form. So I'm going to go ahead and move my equation around so that y is by itself. So I'm going to make sure that I write that 2x right after the inequality symbol. so that it follows up y equals mx plus b format. There we go. So my starting point, my y-intercept is 2, so I'm going to plot a point at 2, and then I'm going to go up 2 to the right 5. There we go. Okay, my linear inequality does have the line underneath, so y is greater than or equal to. So I'm going to make my line a solid line. I'm going to test the point, and the point 0 and 0 is not on that line. So I'm going to use that. So I'm going to plug in those points, and I get that 0 is greater than 2, which it's not. So I can't shade on that side. I have to shade on the other. And then I'm done. Graph the following. This one's already in y equals mx plus b format, so that's perfect. I'm going to plot a point at 7. And then my slope is negative 3. If I want it as a fraction, I'm just going to write a 1 underneath. So my slope is down 3 to the right 1. All right, there is no line underneath my linear inequality, so it is a dashed line. And then I'm going to test a point to figure out which side I shade on, so what side has all my solutions. And I might as well test that point 0 and 0 because it's not on the line. 0 is less than 7, which is true, so I'm coloring on that side. And then I'm finished. So the reason why this line is dashed is because my linear equality says that y is less than negative 3x plus 7. If my line was solid, that would mean that the answers also lie on this line. And we can't have that in this situation because y has to be less than, not less than or equal to. All right, um... I'm going to have to maybe do a part two video for this one. Oh, no, this is the last question. Okay. For which inequalities is the point three and one a possible solution? How do you know? Well, you're going to plug that point in for all these values. So I'm going to plug in three for x and one for y, and I'm going to see if this holds true. And is 4 greater than 4? No, they're the same. So it's not a solution for the first one. For B, 
I'm going to plug it in. Also, I'm running out of time for this 